the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom It's cold, it's windy, it's time to go. Okay, so right now we're gonna be motoring straight into 15 to 18 knots of wind. It's great. We're going straight in so we can't actually put any sail up because it's so narrow, there's no room to tack. So it kind of sucks. Now, tomorrow there's absolutely no wind. So the logical thing would be to go tomorrow. But really, we really want to get there. So it's only 15 more miles and the first eight are narrow. The last seven are uh, pretty wide open. So once we get into the last seven, then we can race sail, we can sail, we can go. We don't need the motor as much. Now there is a halfway point, so if we aren't gonna make it, we can always drop the hook and then wait, and that's only four miles from here. So worst case, we only move four more miles and we get four miles closer to Georgetown. Nope. In case you didn't know, we thought it was a great idea to bring two giant macaws onto the boat. Now, for most stuff, it's pretty nice. They're, uh, they're really cool pets. But sometimes they like to just chew on wood. And when your boat is mostly made of wood, it can make a problem. This is the back of the depth sounder and the speed sensor. And they dripped. And the veneer inside was water damaged. And I was going to replace it when I bought the boat 10 years ago. And then, well, the surveyor had some really good advice. He said, all the things that you think are wrong with the boat, live with it for a couple months. If it still bothers you after a couple months, replace it then. Otherwise, you know, save yourself a huge headache. And this was one of those things that I was gonna fix immediately because it had to be fixed, and here come the birds. And then it, it didn't bother me, but now this is starting to bother me. So I'm just gonna take a scraper, peel off the last bit of veneer, and then we're gonna varnish this whole thing to fix it. All right, so I got it all stripped off, it looks not great, I mean, let's be honest. You can see where the water damage was and then where the wood never got water damaged. And then there's like some squiggle lines from glue and eh, it's so-so. So I'm gonna sand it, try and even out the color as best I can. And then we'll get it coated with some varnish and make it look a heck of a lot better. Jerry, thank you. Yes, thank you very much for making me do these fun projects. Charlie, thank you, you too. Thanks so much for making me do these projects. Yep, just chewing on the wood in the boat. Just Making me do these projects to refinish the boat inside. Thanks. All right, we got that wood in there scraped, sanded, and cleaned. It's ready to varnish. The issue is these guys. The chemicals and varnish are not really the most friendly to breathing. And uh, these guys have like really, really delicate lungs. So if we just go in there and start varnishing, it might kill them. So we're not gonna do that. So instead, we're gonna wait till we get to Georgetown tomorrow and then we'll do it. All right, let's try this again. Now this looks like a lot better conditions to be going in. So I'm glad we stayed yesterday when it was blowing so stinking hard. We knew it wouldn't work, we tried it anyway. And it didn't work, so then we just came right back anchored the solar panels finished charging up the battery so now we're actually going with absolutely full batteries which is something we've never done before honestly this trip from charleston to georgetown it's really close i want to say it's maybe like 40 or 50 miles but it's so beautiful in between and thankfully every anchorage we've stopped in has had a sandy beach to take morty to shore on so that's been just absolutely amazing so now it's time for the very last leg we're gonna make our way by cat island i believe it's called and then pop out into the inlet of Georgetown and make our way up to Georgetown. We're really close, really, really excited.
ran aground coming into Georgetown, so we didn't actually get the anchor in Georgetown. We anchored where our keel hit. Next to Georgetown. Next to Georgetown, indeed. Uh, this time we're hoping to make it all the way in. So we're coming in at high tide, and we should be able to get in all the way to the back to this like big anchorage back there. Charlie. Charles, come on. Wow, this is exciting. We are coming up on our turn to get into Georgetown here. Apparently there are a lot of derelict boats on the way into the anchorage, but then the anchorage itself is pretty open and we're hoping that that report is accurate. to be spending a little more time in Georgetown than we had expected. It was just going to be a one-day stop, but unfortunately yesterday my grandmother passed away and so I'm going to be getting a plane back to Baltimore just for this weekend to spend some time with my family. Uh, and then I'll be returning. So Herbie and the girls and Morty will be remaining here on the boat while I'm gone. I'm really glad that we were near Georgetown when this happened because it gives Herbie a nice place to stay while I have to run back up to be with family. Okay, well Maddie's away. I'm gonna tackle this. So I got it sanded and everything prepped. Now it's just a matter of putting the varnish on. Okay, the first thing we're gonna be doing is putting this wood sealer on. So this stuff is from Total Boat. It seals the wood, gets it prepped for the varnish, and then the varnish just goes on super smooth and just looks beautiful. So you don't have to do a wood sealer before you do varnish, but if you do the wood sealer before the varnish, it just looks amazing. So kinda, why not? Just gonna get some of this other stuff where the birds have chewed all the finish off. First coat, we're gonna do a couple coats here. Once this is like gorgeous looking, then we put the varnish over it just because we're gonna put varnish over it. So this stuff, even though it looks absolutely beautiful when you're done, it is very adamant on this package back when it was legible that this is not varnish, you have to put varnish over this. Okay, so I put one coat of Lust on. And the reason I did Lust is because you can overcoat it once an hour. The way I decide which one I'm gonna use on a project is do I have a lot of time between coats? Like, am I gonna be able to do one coat today, another coat tomorrow, or is this a project I need to get done now? So if it's a quick project, I use Lust because you can coat it every hour and you can do six coats per day. Okay, I got the battery taken out of the dinghy and the new battery that I just made put in the dinghy. And you might be wondering, why? What, what's the point in taking out that battery and putting in an identical looking battery? And the reason is the cells inside. So the new battery I made for the dinghy is made out of six amp cells. The dinghy battery that I took out is made out of five amp cells. They both come out to be about 100 amps, but since I'm gonna be hooking these next batteries up in series, I want them to be identical. So when we made the dinghy battery, we didn't know how much range we were gonna get from an electric outboard. And we were actually really concerned because you hear things about people, you know, charge times and range and all that stuff. And even though we have huge batteries in our boat, this is a small battery, so how far can it actually push a dinghy? So we weren't sure. So when I built the battery, I built two. There's the one that's been in the dinghy all of these months, and then there's a second one. 
It's been living here in our companionway right behind the stairs. So I built two batteries. So if we ran out of power, we could just swap the battery out, leave the dead battery on the boat charging and keep going on the good battery. We never had to do that though. It's just been sitting here for months. And I thought, hey, let's use that for the boat. So we're gonna use that one and the old dinghy battery. Uh, the dinghy battery has about 35 cycles. Now out of three to 5,000, you can say it's pretty much a new battery. And this one has zero cycles because we've never done anything with it. So we're gonna get those hooked up in series, set up to be 48 volt feeding the boat. While those batteries are charging up and doing their thing, I'm gonna work on another project. So we have an anchor light that's all the way at the top of the mast, but the problem that we have is little power boats zip by us at night with no lights on, and I don't think they see it up there. I think they're confusing it with a star. So we're gonna mount another anchor light, a second anchor light, on the stern. It's just a simple matter of attach it on the back and then run some wires to the anchor light switch. So that's done. If you're wondering why do we have honey in a mason jar, it's because Jerry destroyed the top of it. Yeah, totally just chewed it open. I'm just loving every moment of Georgetown. Charleston was amazing and I really, really enjoyed it, but I kind of like Georgetown better. It's, it's more my speed. It's, it's a smaller town, there's fewer people. You can anchor right by the town and then you just dinghy in, like it, it's so easy and there's nothing fouling the bottom and making a horrible situation there. There are alligators here and lots of them, which it's cool to see them and it takes away any thoughts of going swimming. But Charleston, there's so much current and traffic and wakes and wind and and you have to be in a marina and then the marinas are rolly and just everything compounds. Like the food there was amazing. Like Charleston is still one of my favorite places but I am really enjoying Georgetown. Oh, that's some nice grilled chicken right there. Mm -hmm. On to the next step. So I'm gonna hook up our two batteries, uh, which we have named after electric Pokemon. So we have Chinchu and Lantern. So they're gonna be hooked up in series inside this locker right behind me, behind the companionway steps, like way up in the back. I'm gonna tie them in, get them really secure, get them wired up and feed them into the boat's general electrical system. So that way the motor can run off of them as well. So as you guys know, we've had issues where our batteries got wet and it was a huge mess. So after that, we make all our batteries inside Pelican cases because they're waterproof, they're just crush proof, they're, they're awesome. They're just absolutely amazing. So the batteries are totally safe and I'm building them as 24 volt batteries because each one weighs about 40 to 50 pounds instead of being 80 some pounds so that makes it slightly easier to maneuver and get them around and get them into places and since they're lithium they don't have to be in any specific orientation it's just chuck them where they fit strap them in and they should be good our favorite town was charleston and our favorite icw stretch was the wakama and i think you're gonna see why herbie now needs to go back to baltimore this weekend to move windpuff windpuff is our alberg 30 our other boat so this is Windpuff. She's an Auburg 30 from 1966, and uh, we're gonna take a little tour. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.